I've got three words for you. No auto focus. Two, two words. If you're anything like me, then those two words can be an immediate red flag. I mean, with the technology we have today, autofocus has become, well, really impressive. With all that said, you might be surprised to hear that I've spent the last year shooting with these cinema lenses from DZO Film. After one year of using these lenses on a regular basis, one year of essentially giving up autofocus, was the sacrifice worth it? Have these lenses actually made me a better filmmaker? And to be honest, the answer is, well, yeah. But let's break down why. Here's the thing, whether you're a photographer or not, I can almost guarantee that the lens that's on your camera right now is a photography lens. The thing that a lot of beginner filmmakers and content creators don't realize is that a lot of the popular consumer options are truly designed for photography. They're incredibly sharp, contrasty, some almost so crispy that they can make images look almost unreal. And for some people, that's the goal, as much detail as possible. But when it comes to cinematography, oddly enough, a lot of professionals tend to want almost the exact opposite. Take a look at scenes from some of the most iconic films in history. There's so many shots that are so gritty, so soft, so, I don't know, textured and filmic. Even in more modern movies and TV series, cinematographers are striving for that organic look. These productions could have the sharpest, most detailed, high resolution shots in the world. And that's the point. They don't want that look. Good cinematography feels authentic. It makes new experiences feel almost nostalgic, like as if you're watching a memory form in real time. And to do that, along with lighting and cameras, set decoration, even color grading, lens choice can be near the top of that list. This is a big reason why things like pro mist filters and fog machines or haze have picked up so much popularity in recent years with content creators and filmmakers. They're essentially just an attempt to introduce some of those traditional cinematic imperfections into our modern near perfect lenses. Okay, bear with me for like 30 seconds here. Gotta get some of the tech stuff out of the way. Let's talk about some of the physical attributes of these lenses. They're a full metal housing with amazing build quality, gears on both the focus and iris rings, which are incredibly smooth, a consistent overall size and front diameter across the entire set. They come in a Canon EF mount and also a PL mount, which is user swappable. I have the 25, 30, 35, 50, and 90 millimeter macro. This set came with a nice carrying case that fits all four lenses. These have full frame VistaVision coverage, which is pretty insane for the price, which is around $1,300 per lens. I'm fully aware that $1,300 for a single lens isn't exactly what you would call affordable. Also, I gotta say, this is not sponsored. DZO sent me these lenses purely for review over a year ago. And so I mean it when I say I wanted to take my time with these things to give you guys my honest impressions. All those details aside, let's get to what you guys actually care about, how these lenses look, the actual image quality. I've really been able to put these lenses through their paces, shooting so many different projects, various styles and looks. They have a very natural color reproduction and contrast with soft, and creamy bokeh and really clean focus fall off, I find that they're the perfect balance of being organic without being too vintagey or creamy, but also not being overly sharp or you know too clinical looking compared to something like this Sigma 18 to 35, which I'm sure you guys know is incredibly popular. They work perfectly for just about any type of look, and I've been really impressed with how versatile these things have been. 25 millimeter especially on my red Komodo, which yes, is a super 35 sensor. Something about it, the combination, it just looks so clean. It's a wide and immersive feel, but the perfect balance of softness and distortion and the edges that really make it feel very filmic. 
kind of hate using that word, but the 25 and 50 are probably my favorite with the 35 falling in a close second. I do really enjoy the 90 millimeter macro just because it's a macro lens doesn't mean you can't use it as just a normal lens, but I will say I haven't used this thing enough. Need to do some more macro stuff. This is a set of Cook S4 mini cinema lenses, which if you don't know, are regarded as a staple with filmmakers across the world. The Cook look is a highly sought after thing by cinematographers and directors with its super pleasing, warm and soft character. They're famous for how well they render skin tones and make the out of focus areas of the image look very painterly and sort of making subjects pop off the screen in a very three dimensional way. When looking at the 50 millimeter DZO versus the 50 millimeter Cook S4 Mini, which is also about six times as expensive, just for reference, yeah, I would say the Cook does look better. The DZO is noticeably cooler and the Boca just doesn't look quite as good, but it's really impressive how well the DZO holds up against this titan of a cinema lens. I totally get how to a lot of people, it can be hard to justify having a fully manual prime lens when you can have something like an 18 to 35 F 1.8 with autofocus. Like why would you really want all of that extra work? The big realization for me here was that a photo lens like this isn't just a one size fits all for filmmaking and for cinematography. There's a reason why $50,000 cinema lenses exist. you don't see professional cinematographers using a Sony or Sigma or Canon photography lens on the front of their cinema cameras. There's a whole layer and art form of cinematography that comes to having and using the right lens for your project. These DZO Vespids, well, yeah, they're a budget cinema lens they are able to stand up to some of the biggest names in the industry. And frankly, I feel like they've been more than capable of creating an image that does stand out against work that I've shot on photography lenses. Okay, let's address probably one of the most concerning factors about cinema lenses for most video shooters. Autofocus is literally a lifesaver. The fact that we can track a singular person's face, like literally tap, put a box on them, and walk through a sea of people and stay perfectly in focus, that, that literally blows my mind. And for certain types of work, like run and gun documentary or event videography, or even this, YouTube videos, you're damn right, I'm going to want that god tier aimbot autofocus. But is this the way of the future? Is autofocus the new standard of filmmaking? Well, to be honest, no. In fact, I think it's actually far from it. I think it's kind of holding a lot of filmmakers back from improving their skills. In almost every other form of filmmaking, manual focus is just how you do it. And to some, it may seem counterintuitive to do it this way. Like, why wouldn't you want the camera to just do all the work and keep the subject in focus perfectly all the time? These photography lenses, while they're so amazing and convenient and there's so many different options and the autofocus is incredible, frankly, I just feel like sometimes they make things look unreal. They make it look digital. Everything always being so sharp, there's often so little imperfection and texture within the images. Yeah, sure, maybe just throw some overlays or film grain on it, call it a day, but when you think of a memory or a beautiful moment in time, often it's a little hazy, it's kind of soft, maybe difficult to make out those kind of small micro details. In my mind, those imperfect characteristics are what makes cinematography the most relatable and the most organic. Look, it may be a lot more work in some cases, especially for a singular person. Manual focus is another component to filmmaking that truly allows you to further immerse your creative vision into the story. It's really one of the few ways other than camera movement that your hands have a direct physical impact on the image that your audience sees. That may not sound all that significant, but 
when used creatively, it truly can be a whole other layer of filmmaking you can use as a storytelling device. That's exactly why there's an entire career for focus pulling. A first AC is someone whose primary job is to keep the shot in focus, to pull focus usually with a wireless follow focus system, racking focus in a scene to help direct the viewer's attention to certain characters or areas in a frame, to small character nuances in sharp focus, to intentionally having a subject out of focus to create tension or suspense. There's so many ways that focus can be used to convey emotion or tell certain parts of a story when you really begin to think about it. It's such a large part of why manual focus cinema lenses are so dire in comparison to just turning on autofocus putting it on the subject's face and letting it roll the entire shot. The more you automate with technology, the more convenience you gain, but the less creative control you have in the end. While it's so easy to lean on all of the incredible tools we have on our disposal that can make the process so simple and easy, more often than not, those things can hold us back from breaking past plateaus and furthering our craft. In a sense, what I'm really trying to say here is that autofocus has undoubtedly impacted filmmaking for the better. And I absolutely do not deny the fact that for a large majority of filmmakers, including myself, depending on the scope of work, is absolutely a tool that I want in my arsenal. But in challenging myself with a year of commitment to these lenses, a year of really learning how to use manual focus, I've truly realized that the experience of using cinema lenses has allowed me to discover new depths to my passion for filmmaking and absolutely gave me a deeper respect to those who have truly mastered them. They've helped me grow as a cinematographer. They've helped me feel more confident working on productions with higher end equipment. In some ways, I would say that these things have made me more money. So one year later, DZO Vespids, are they worth it? Absolutely, I can highly recommend these things. These are an excellent balance of price to optical quality and I gotta say, I've really enjoyed my time with them. Thanks DZO for sending these out. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.